There you are. You've spoken with the survivors. Indeed. We thought to share what we have gleaned, that we might together gain a greater understanding of present circumstances. Fortuitous timing. Alize and I completed our own investigations not long ago. Then we should take a moment to compare notes. Shall we begin with the two of you? So the merchant Karzal was gravely concerned about his business in the days preceding his untimely end. The tales we heard were much the same. The first victims to be changed into blasphemies were all overcome with anguish of one manner or another. Then those who saw their loved ones stolen before their eyes succumbed to a similar panic setting in motion a chain of transformations. Fear, unease, despair. These negative feelings serve as a catalyst. If so, then it is not unlike the calamity that befell the ancients. With their creation magics, they unwittingly gave form to untold horrors. Had they simply lost control, Surely it would have manifested in many forms, not all of them monstrous. Yet somehow, this phenomenon is triggered solely by the darkness in their hearts, a common thread with what we now witness. Common, but not identical. While the beasts the ancients faced were forged with magic alone, those of today are born of sentient beings. Why remains to be seen, but there is one fundamental difference between us and our predecessors. Our souls are sundered, whereas theirs were not. Perhaps that single variable makes all the difference. If I may, there was another detail that troubled me. We have it on good authority that Karl Zahl's transformation took place before the skies began to burn. What? If that's true, then the situation's more dire than we realized. It means even if there's no ominous sign presaging the final days, anyone, anywhere, has the potential to become a beast. Even in lands we thought safe, even as we speak. Look! It's the Sartrap! The Sartrap! Thank the heavens! My countrymen, I am relieved and heartened to see you strong and safe. While the danger has not yet passed, far from it, allow me to assure you that the beasts that raged within the city walls have been exterminated to the last. Outside this sanctuary, the brave men and women of the Radiant Host and our dragon ally continue to battle our unholy foes. I pray these tidings put your minds at ease and help you calm your hearts. Have faith that we shall soon conquer this terrible trial. Your Excellency, is there any word from Balaga's stand? My grandson was bound for there yesterday and I, I worry for his life. We are still awaiting a report, but I promise you, as soon as I have all to share, You... Your Excellency... 
I bring grave news. You are? I... I'm Matsya of, of Akyali, a humble fisherman. Ah, I remember you from our first visit. Uh huh? Wait, you're. But. But no, that can wait. When the skies turned red, I set off for Balakistan. Fearing for the safety of a friend. But as I drew near the village, I, I saw dreadful beasts all about. No! God have mercy! Your Excellency! Save my grandson, I beg of you! We will spare no effort to save all we can, but you must remain calm. Calm? You tell me to be calm? You saw those beasts! They tore our bravest warriors limb from limb! What if we are too late, huh? Did they catch him? Sink their fangs into him? The fangs! <laughs> Get away from her! Now! Kill them before it spreads. We'll handle this. See the townspeople to safety. Run as fast as you can. Run, for their sake and your own. Yes, you will survive. You must.
Be strong, my friends! Fear not, for we will defeat these abominations! Brave men and women of the Radiant Host, lend your stola and thank with your aid. Let not a single beast escape. The rest of you, flee this place. Carry the wounded if you must. Head indoors or underground. Above all, stay calm. No beast will follow you. We will see to that. Alphano! Alize! Leave the city to us and make for Palaka's stand at once! Matya, show my friends to the village. I promise you, they're more capable than the host's finest. R right. Go with them, will you? We will save these people, as many as we can.
No more enemies to trouble us here. It's me. How fair you below. Understood. I will inform Vritra. Chaos and panic sweep Ra's at Han, and many more have succumbed to the transformations. Amidst the fray, Ahawan fell, protecting a grief-stricken father. <sighs> My friends fight alongside your radiant host to secure the capital. Beasts have been sighted in Palakas stand as well. We have divided our forces in hopes of quelling the threat there. Of small solace is that we now know what triggers the transformation, as my companions tell it. So it is the very fear and despair in their hearts which inflict this abhorrent punishment upon them. A nightmare from which my children will never awake. O oh, capricious and cruel fate, they are undeserving of such condemnation. Will you wallow in sorrow or rise to the occasion? Razat Han is leaderless. Before he passed, Ahawan sought to reveal the truth to his people. Honor his wishes. To what end? To breed a new conflict between dragon and man? These claws could reduce thee to shreds with a touch. These jaws crush thy bones to dust. Only through my proxy could I walk with my children. Without him, I am a bringer of fear. No different from the beasts which beleaguer them. Perhaps so. Only in death were Hreisvelga and Shiva united. Indeed, whenever man and dragon have come together, death has ever been the inevitable result. It was our fear of your kind that sparked a nigh-endless war. Fear and hate of which Nidhogg drank deep as he laid waste to my homeland. And in turn, I took my revenge on his brood. Blood for blood, pain for pain. I thought nothing of theirs, only of mine. And yet, were the chasm between us too vast and too deep, Kreisvelga would not have borne his sail to battle and our rescue. He would never have entrusted a mortal champion with one of his eyes, and the Dragon Song War would still rage on. And I would still wage a never-ending war of violence and vengeance. The future of our star be damned. I cannot speak for Ahuan's greater goals, yet I know that he served you, served your people long and true. In this time of unprecedented crisis, he turned to you. You could do worse than to place your trust in him. It will not be easy, but the future of Radzid Han hangs in the balance. We have company. Come, Vritra! It's all or nothing!
courage, friend. The pain will pass. Has anyone seen Mervan? Where could she be? We've dealt with all the blasphemies, and made certain no villagers are still in hiding. Good work. We've otherwise tended to the wounded as best we can. What will become of us? Help is on the way, surely. We may have to abandon our homes now, but we will return, someday. But where can we go? Is anywhere even safe? That I cannot say. Well, I can. Nowhere safe. Run all you like, but there's no escape in these things. And even if I could... <laughs> it's too late for my family. <laughs> This isn't good. The more they dwell on the tragedy, the more likely we are to lose them, too. My friends, this... This is a place of worship. Should your heart quake with sadness, cast your mind to the heavens and remember. Remember the teachings of the old gods. Did they not implore us to stand fast when waves of sorrow break against our shores? Know this, my children. There is more ugliness than beauty in this world. To live is to suffer. To drink of calamity and drown in anguish. To toil and be tested, always and ever. Tis a perilous path you walk. Death lurks in the dark, and is the sole promise that awaits at journey's end. You will tremble with terror. You will weep tears of anger and despair. But do not avert your eyes. See your life for what it is. Then will you see how the hardships make you strong. Every doubt reforged as scales for your armor. Every agony to temper your blade. Thank you, lad. We'd almost forgotten who we are. My undying gratitude to you as well, my friends. You were searching for Mevan, no? We must return home. I pray you help the boy find his friend. Gladly. We dispatched what beasts we could, but the roads are still dangerous. Stay together and go in safety. That was very impressive, what you did back there. Those words seemed to resonate with your people. 
We should. They were the first spoken unto our ancestors by the divinity of legend. I'm easily upset, and fish are wont to flee a temperamental hand. So I recite the teachings over and over to calm myself. They're lovely and inspiring to hear, though I imagine they were born of great misfortune. They are born of life. There's as much bad as good in it. More, many would attest. All the more reason to appreciate the good when you can. I won't argue with that. In darkness, seek joy. Surrender not to sadness and see beyond despair. Walk free and bear the light for others to follow. And with that, let us see if we can't find Mervyn. Did you see? That beast was chasing someone. She's so cold, Elphino. The child is alert, and I see no wounds, and yet... <sighs> she grows weaker. My spells can do no more. What she needs is a change of clothes and a warm bed. We must hurry back. <laughs> Not now! Matsya, take the child. Years we've made enough noise to be heard for miles around. More will be upon us ere long. We make our stand here. Matya, can you take her back to the village? But the child? All, all by myself? You can't be serious! The beasts will follow you home unless we stop them here. And so we shall. Be strong, Matsya. Her life is in your hands. Right. I... I can do it. I know you can. We'll keep them busy, Matsya. Go! Quickly!
<laughs> Steady. You know the way. No. No. Not you too. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. To live is to suffer, to drink of calamity. It is a perilous path. Death lurks in the dark. No! I'm not afraid! I'm not afraid! Do not avert your eyes. See, see your life for what it is. See how the hardships make you strong. Every doubt reforged. Every agony. <sighs> the divinity Please, you must save the child. She is all that remains of Mevan and Grasef. Please. Well, well. Seems the babe's taken a liking to you. Despite our friends as we flew in, they appeared to be holding their own against the Horde. Right. That's the last of them. We should hurry and find Matsya. What, like divine aid? A fine battle it must have been. Shame I missed it. Estinian, it was you who came to Matsya's aid. I was only along for the ride. Vritra was the one who saw the boy was in need. The two are headed back to the village. Where the worm will honor Ahiwan's wishes and finally reveal himself to his people. Perhaps so. Will you go and join them? There's something I need to do first. Mervyn gave her life so that her child might live. She deserves better than to be left to drift alone. She deserves to be laid to rest beside her husband, at least. Will you help me? <laughs> 